<clears throat> Can you play kirtans also? If every kirtan, just pick up a pair of kirtans without me asking you to play them. Because the more kirtans that are there in the kirtan, the more full the sound is. <clears throat> And if I, if no one can play the gong, then just a couple of pairs of kartals are not very complete. So, but when the Murdanga is here, then Murdanga kartal is good, and at the same time, even better is the gong. But I play the gong generally if Madhukar is here, because Madhukar plays the Murdanga. And I prefer others to play the Murdanga, but when no one's here to play it, then I will have to take up that seva. Yes. So you know how to say the Jayadvani? You can say the Jayadvani in the microphone. The microphone can be brought over. Yeah, you can say the Jayadvani. And one day I'll call on Guranga Prabhu to say the Jayadvani also. So be prepared to speak the Jayadvani. Okay. okay. Jai Jai Shishi Guru Gurangan Darvika Yihari Radu Vinod Bihari Ki Jai 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 Niti Lila Praishna Vishnu Pata Shtota Rashatar Shishi Mata Chibak Vinata Swami Maharaj Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Niti Lila Praishna Vishnu Pata Shtota Rashatar Shishi Mata Bhakti Rakshak Shridhar Gaswami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Niti Lila Praishna Vishnu Pata Shtota Rashatar Shishi Mata Bhakti Vinata Narayana Maharaj Ki Jai Niti Lila Praishna Vishnu Pata Shtota Rashatar Shishi Mata Bhakti Pragyana Kesha Gaswami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Нитилил Кришна Ом Вишнапата Штота Рашата Шришимат Бхакти Сидханта Сарасвати Такур Джагат Гуру Прамахамса Кула Свами Шрил Гопада Киджай Маха Бхагавата Шрила Гора Кишора Дас Баджи Гасвами Харадж Киджай Саб Тами Гасвами Саб Читана Нашил Бхакти Винод Такур Гасвами Харадж Киджай Рамхамса Вашнава Сарабам Шрил Джаганат Хадас Баджи Гасвами Харадж Киджай Ширупану Гуру Варги Киджай Шигавни Чар Ши Баладу и Девушна Прабхатрая Киджай Шил Вишнават Чита Кровать Такур Киджай Шил Наватам Шнивас Шимананда Прабхатрая Киджай Шил Кришна Даска и Ражга Сниампад Киджай Ши Сварупада Ши Рупа Санатна Бата Рагунатка Ши Джива Гопала Бата Даса Рагунатка Шага Свами Маха Киджай Ши Сварупа Дамадара Рай Рамананда Ши Гупраша Давринда Киджай Намачари Ши Лахари Даста Кур Киджай Ши Даун Даста Кур Киджай Ши Горга Датхар Киджай Ши Лакшми При Вишну При Гора Сундар Киджай Прима Сиха Мочи Кришна Чита Не Праву Нитина Ши Адвата Гарит Хара Ши Вас Ди Гора Бах Тавринда Киджай Ши Девари Ши Нарада Муни Киджай Ши Рука Девагасой Махарадж Киджай Махамуни Висадев Киджай Джай Ши Рада Кришна Рада Гокулу Нандана Рада Шима Сундара Рада Рамана Рада Гупинат Рада Мадан Мухан Рада Мадан Гупала Рада Ладита Мадва Рада Гавинда Ши Рада Вину Двигари Киджай Джай Ши Ши Рада Кришна Гопа Гопи Гогу Варан Двада Шанат Ванад Макаши Враджи Мандала Киджай Ши Ама Кунда Рада Кунда Ему Наган Гату Си Бхакти Дев Киджай Ши Лалита Вишака Адя Шта Саккавринда Киджай Ши Рупа Манжари Рати Манжари Ананга Манжари Адя Шта Саккавринда Киджай Ши Навад Вип Дхам Киджай Варин Даван Дхам Киджай Джаганата Пури Дхам Киджай Ши Варин Дадеви Киджай Ши Йога Майя Пронамаси Деви Киджай Ши Йога Майя Пронамаси Деви Киджай Сарва Пишта Прадат Ши Гири Раджа Гавартан Махарадж Киджай Ши Гопи Ши Рама Хадев Киджай Ши Джаганат Хабала Дева Субхадар Сударшина Чакра Киджай Сарва Вигна Инашин Ши Рин Симха Бхагаван Киджай Бхагата Парава Ши Палхад Махарадж Киджай Ши Гранд Харадж Шимат Бхагавад Бхагавад Гита Читание Читание Бхагаватам Киджай Гранд Асамадхи Киджай 
Чарадама Чаря Чая Чая Сандабарови Ринда Киджа Карамат Харади Ши Читани Матха Киджа Ши Кешева Гауни Матха Киджа Ши Грит Хари Гауни Матха Киджа Ши Рупасанатна Гауни Матха Киджа Ши Читани Сарасват Гауни Матха Киджа Ши Читани Гауни Матха Киджа Ши Гобинат Гауни Матха Киджа Ши Читани Миссии Гауни Матха Киджа Ши Гауни Над Самити Киджа Ши Харинама Санкиртна Киджа Махаманта Хари Кришна Криджа Баладев Прабу Киджа Кришна Баларам Киджа Чати Гуру Киджа Ши Бхакти Деви Киджа Ананта Комиошна Вринда Киджа Самагада Бхаката Вринда Киджа Нитай Гура Примананда Хари Oh. Okay, that's a very good, but before the class, then we should do sunk shape, that means shortened, not all, because otherwise it takes too much time from the class, but very good, I like your Jai Dwani, you have found many other personalities to add. <laughs> okay. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaura Bhakta Vinda Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Gadadhar Shiva Sari Gaur Bhakta Vinda Shri Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. <coughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. 
हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण कृष्ण राधे राधे गोविंद गोविंद राधे 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 गोविंद गोविंद राधे 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 गोविंद गोविंद 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 राधे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय निताय जय गो जय निताय जय गो जय निताय जय गो जय निताय जय गो गौर हरि भो हरि भो हरि भो गौर हरि भो नित 
जाय गौर हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि Shinitai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo Please sit this way so I can see your face during the class. Yeah. Oma Gyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Mukam Kuroti Vachalam Pangam Langayate Girim Yat Kripa Tamaham Bande Shri Gurun Dinataranam Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Some ringing is there in the speaker has to be adjusted. Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Namo Mahabadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaura Trishe Namaha Nityanandam Namastubhyam Premananda Pradayane Kalo Kalamashanashaya Janava Pataye Namaha Namo Mahabadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Goda Trishe Namaha Panchatatvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhaktavataram Bhaktakyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Taptakanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vrindai Tulsidebhai Priyai Keshavasyacha Krishna Bhakti Prade Devi Satyavachai Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare First of all I'm offering my unlimited dandavat pranams and my shraddha pushpanjali <coughs> at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Gurudev, Nitya Leela Pravishta, Om Vishnu Pad, Paramahansa, Astotarasata Sri Srila, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada. Then I'm offering my same unlimited Dandavat Pranams and my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Siksha Gurudev's 
Nityalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pat Paramahansa Stotara Sata Sri Shila Bhakti Rakshak Sri Goswami Maharaj and Nityalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pat Paramahansa Asto Tarasata Sri Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. I offer my Dandavat Pranams at the Lotus feet of all of my Sri Sri Rupanuga Guru Varga and my Dandavat Pranams to all the Vaishnavas and to all the Vaishnavis. Today also is the, um, I think, disappearance day of Srila Bhakti Balabhatirtha Goswami Maharaj. Yeah, disappearance day. And his appearance day uh, was just 10 days ago or something. And tomorrow is Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur disappearance day. And then the next day, Saturday, is Varutini Ekadasi. So, uh, because we had kata about Srila Bhakti Balabhatirtha Maharaj on his appearance day, so today I'm not going to go into the topic of his glorification, uh, but there's also a channel, a WhatsApp channel, which was uh, told to us that they're going to have a very big program there at Sri Chaitanya Gaudiya Mat, and there's an English translation of all the speakers on this WhatsApp, so devotees can listen to that if they like. Maybe there's even a Russian one, I don't know. But, um, but I'm offering my obeisances at his divine lotus feet. Uh, always I consider him to be one of my revered Siksha gurus, and he gave so much um, uh, inspiration to me in my spiritual life. And uh, although a very great Acharya figure, but he was also very approachable and very friendly and sweet, sweet-natured to all of us. So I uh, have so much fond recollections of him and uh, I always pray that I can get a drop of his mercy and be even one iota of a servant of Hari Guru and Vaishnavas that he demonstrated in his transcendental life on this earth planet. So all glories to Srila Bhakti Balabhatirtha Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. <coughs> Now we're going to be continuing with our reading of Sri Bhakti Tattva Viveka. We're on the first chapter. Uh, the first chapter's title, where is that? The Intrinsic Nature of Bhakti. What is the intrinsic nature of bhakti? So. We read into a little little bit of a distance. And the last thing that we read was that the word bhakti is derived from the Sanskrit root verb. Uh, that root verb form is called bhaj, B-H-A-J. And it is said in the Garuda Purana, there is a verse that is quoted here from the Pur Purvakanda, Baj ityesha vaidatu sevayam parikirtita tasmat seva budai prokta bhakti sadhana bhuyasi. The verbal root bhaj means to render service. So what is what is the verbal what is the verbal root of the word bhakti? I'm asking you all question. What is the verbal root in Sanskrit of the word bhakti? Yes, bhaj. So therefore 
we also utilize this word from the directly from the root bhaj for the word bhajan uh, bhajami you'll find this word all throughout uh, especially the bhakti literatures so the the translation of this uh, verse just quoted now from the Garuda Purana is that the verbal root budge means to render service. I remember in Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita, he also mentioned this. He says the word budge uh, means there, that when it is utilized when there is need of service. He said. So bhaj means to render service. And since that happens to be the constitutional position of every living entity, well, it's a very important word. So how do you render service? You have to do bhakti. <laughs> the word bhakti comes from bhaj. So then in that verse, the translation says, therefore, because the verbal root budge means to render service. So therefore, thoughtful sadhaks, they should engage in the service of Sri Krishna with great endeavor. For it is only by such service that bhakti is born. So bhakti has to be born. We don't have it yet, do we? Do conditioned souls have bhakti? No, they don't. This is a very um, interesting subject matter. How bhakti comes. In Madhurya Kadambani introduction, there's a very wonderful uh, explanation by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. How does bhakti come? How does it come into this world? How does it come into the hearts of the different jivas? What's the method? Hmm? Does it just sudden automatically appear? No. So that's why it's saying here that a person who is thoughtful, that means that he's serious. He's, he's de trying to go deep, to think very deeply. That, okay, I want to attain bhakti. Uh, so therefore, what should I do if I want to attain bhakti? I should engage in the service of Sri Krishna. What, how should I engage? With very great endeavor. See, this is where Upadesha Amrita comes in. How to engage. Uh, utsahan, nishayat, daryat. With enthusiasm. If you don't have enthusiasm, your bhakti is not going to grow. Uh, 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 I don't know. Maybe I won't get bhakti. This kind of mood is useless in the pathway of bhakti yoga. We have to be consistent and persistent. We have to persist. This is why our acharyas have shown us the topmost level. Six Goswamis. How they feel great moods of separation. How they're merged in the moods of the gopis. How 24 hours a day they are rendering service. Huh? And barely they have any time for sleeping or eating. So we cannot imitate that. If we try to imitate that, after two, three days, we will fall down. Yes, completely. So that's not expected in the beginning. But what is expected is Shraddha, faith. And if Shraddha is there, first of all, Shraddha in Guru, Shraddha in Krishna, like that. And that Shraddha expands into the conception of Guru Tattva that many, many gurus, many Siksha gurus. Hmm? So, Shraddha means, if someone has it, then they can begin to do bhakti. But if they don't have Shraddha, it would be difficult. Just like the other day I was speaking with Goranga Prabhu. What were we speaking about? 
We were discussing we were discussing how from his Christian family none of them can understand and accept at all. No matter what he presents the very very credible arguments <laughs> that Bhagavad Gita in comparison with the Bible I'm not going into the topic very deeply but he was saying his father, various others, because they actually are employed in a Christian church, but they cannot, they cannot accept. They, they have no ability to embrace and accept and say, oh yeah, that's very interesting. Let me think about it. Oh yes, he even challenged them. Every day, I will read for 10 minutes from the Bible if you read for 10 minutes every day from the Bhagavad Gita. No cannot do. Why can they not do it? They don't have any, not one iota of actual shraddha. This is the problem. And their religiosity is completely contaminated with sinful activities and so forth. So there's no purity there. Huh? And many other reasons. Heart is very unclean. But when a person has some Sukriti, background of Sukriti from previous lives, and in this life as well, then Shraddha can come huh? in the association of sadhus. But if they will not associate with sadhus, that Shraddha cannot actually be born and take place. So here, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is, say, is quoting this verse that only by service to Sri Krishna with great endeavor only then bhakti can be born bhakti can take birth so he says that according to this verse loving devotional service to Krishna is called bhakti and such service is the intrinsic attribute of bhakti intrinsic attribute of bhakti so in the main verse that we're discussing from bhakti rasamrita sindhu uh shunyam the word krishnanu shilanam has been used and what is the purport of this the purport is that swayam bhagavan shri krishna he alone is the sole and the ultimate objective indicated by the term Kevala Bhakti, exclusive devotion, only to Krishna, no one else, not even his expansions. So the word Bhakti is also used for Narayan and various other expansions of Krishna, but the complete sentiments of bhakti that can be reciprocated with Krishna cannot be reciprocated with other forms. This point can be analyzed in detail on another occasion when the topic is more suitable for it. For the time being it is necessary to understand that the Supreme Lord in his Bhagavan feature he is the only object of bhakti. There is no other object hmm? in his Bhagavan feature. Now, although the Supreme Absolute Truth, who is called Paratattva, Paratattva, Supreme Absolute Truth, although he is one, not two, the Supreme Absolute Truth is only one. Uh, but uh, this Paratattva is manifested in three forms. What are those three forms? Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. Just like the other day we were discussing, and in, in the Bible, Christianity, they, they add this understanding into their philosophy that God is a triune God, they say three aspects what is that? God the Father 
God the Son and God the Holy Ghost right but the Holy Ghost is similar to Paramatma the Son uh, is like Jiva Tattva and the Father is like Bhagavan mm -hmm. so but the Vedas only, only from the Vedas can you understand each and every, every terminology in complete detail uh, and what, is in, what it is indicating. Mm? So, those who try to perceive this absolute truth through the cultivation of knowledge, what is that? Gyan. Those who try to perceive the absolute truth through gyan the cultivation of knowledge they cannot realize anything beyond brahman understand if they try to approach the absolute truth through gyan turn your ringer off just put it on vibrate if they uh, if they try to understand uh, this absolute truth through gyan just speculative knowledge logic etc if they try what what will they be able to achieve only knowledge of brahman the impersonal aspect of the supreme absolute truth so you know what this is why all the abrahamic religions they're all impersonal and even in course of time, religions that stem from Vaishnavism, for example, Sikhism, because Guru Nanak, the originator of the Sikh religion, was a pure Vaishnava. But over a few hundred years, they eliminated the form of God from the temple, you see? And now they become impersonalists. So the point being made here is very important to understand. Why? Because nirvishesha shunyavadi paschacha deshatarani. Because the entire world is full of what? Nirvishesh kyan. God has no form, no features, no qualities. And shunyavadi, that everything is void. No purpose of existence. So, in the Kali Yuga, people become very easily misled by different philosophical presentations which actually don't really give true transcendental knowledge. Huh? They become misled and misguided. Said so that is because they're trying to approach the absolute truth through Gyan. Now, moving on. Through such a uh, spiritual endeavor, through this gyan, they try to cross material existence by negation of the qualities of the material world. You know what negation means? Oh, it's not this. Uh, I'm looking, I'm searching. No, no, it's not this. No, it's not this. That is called neti neti in Sanskrit. So, through these, through these spiritual endeavors, they try to cross material existence by this process called neti neti. And thus, they imagine Brahman to be inconceivable, unmanifest, formless, and immutable. But merely imagining the absence of material qualities, that does not grant one factual realization of the absolute truth. Because the absolute truth is not just the negative of material qualities. It's a supreme positive spiritual reality. Huh? So such, such a spiritualists they think that because the names, the forms, the qualities, the activities in the material world, because they are all temporary and they're also painful, so therefore Brahman, which exists beyond the contamination of matter, cannot possess any of eternal names, form, qualities, pastimes, and so on. Do you understand this point? Hmm? 
What was just said here? You know? Tell. In the mic. The material world names, qualities, and everything is material. So these people, such people, think uh, if um, Brahman has this name, so it is also material, so like this. Because in material worlds, uh, yeah. <clears throat> because in the material world, all of these features, they're full of pain and suffering. <laughs> and so these mental speculators, they argue, they say that because all these material world names, forms, etc., uh, they're temporary. All these names and forms, they're temporary and they're also painful. They're full of suffering. So therefore, Brahman, which exists beyond the contamination of matter, it cannot possess eternal names, form, qualities, pastimes, and so on. They argue that on the basis of evidence from the Shrutis, which emphasize the absence of material attributes in the Supreme, so they argue on that basis that the absolute truth is beyond the purview of mind and words and that that absolute truth has no ears, no limbs or other bodily parts and these arguments they have some place but they can't, cannot be set, but they what? but they can be settled by analyzing the statement of Advaita Charya which is found in Chaitanya Chandradaya Nataka, written by Kavi Karnapura. Yaya Shrutir Jalpati Nirvesham Sa Sa Vidate Savivesha Meva Vichara Yoga Sati Hanta Tasam Prayo Baliya Savishesham Eva. Here's the meaning of this verse spoken by Advaita Charya in the Chaitanya Chandra Dayanataka. It is telling that in whatever statements from the Shrutis where the impersonal aspect of the Absolute Truth is indicated, then in the very same statements the personal aspect is also mentioned. They're not only mentioning the impersonal aspect, in the Shrutis. They mention, whenever they mention the impersonal, they also mention the personal aspect. So by carefully analyzing all the statements from the Shrutis as a whole, then we can see that the impersonal aspect is emphasized more. Sorry, the personal, personal aspect is emphasized more when we analyze all the statements of the Shrutis as a whole we see that the personal aspect is emphasized more. So for example, one Shruti says that the absolute truth has no hands, no legs, and no eyes. But we understand that he does everything. He travels everywhere and he sees everything. So the pure understanding of this statement is that he doesn't have material hands material legs, material eyes, and so forth, as the conditioned souls do. His form is transcendental. That means it, that it is beyond the 24 elements of the material nature, and his form is purely spiritual. So, by the cultivation of Gyan, it will appear that the impersonal Brahman is the supreme truth. Huh? You find people like this all the time, everywhere. They don't believe in the personal form. They think that every, it's, everything is one. Especially you go to the Western countries where people are starting to get into yoga, New Age philosophies and all of that. And they like to identify that everything is one. We're all one. It's all one. Oneness. What is oneness called in Sanskrit? Advaita. <laughs> Without duality, no, no separate, 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 no, only one. Now, Gyan, when you cultivate Gyan, 
then it appears like this to the person who cultivates jnana that the impersonal in the impersonal brahman that is the supreme truth supreme truth now here the subtlety is that jnana itself is material okay that's the thing jnana is material it's not spiritual so so that means that in the material world whatever knowledge that we acquire or whatever philosophical principle siddhanta that we establish it is done by depending solely upon material attributes mm? understand in the material what, what else can they depend upon if we want to if if they these gyanis they want to establish a philosophical principle that's called siddhanta uh, then it is done by depending solely upon material attributes because that's what we're we're able to perceive we're not able to perceive the spiritual attributes yet so therefore either either that principle is material or by applying the process of negation of the material world which is called vyati reka so uh, negation of the material by applying that principle that process we conceive of a principle that is the opposite of gross matter but by this method one can achieve one cannot achieve the factual supreme truth can somebody can somebody come to a conclusion big big scientists with all their experimentation physics all different fields of science speculating 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 till the end of time what is the source of the world and looking through their telescopes and all of that and their microscopes and trying to analyze 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 everything did anyone come to a final conclusion through this that god has a beautiful transcendental spiritual form from which the human form resembles his form did anyone come to that conclusion no that's the proof it is impossible through gyan and mental speculation and analysis by logic the only conclusion that can be reached by an intelligent person is that this process of gyan cannot uh deliver the knowledge of the absolute truth to me therefore gyane prayasam udapasya namante eva the conclusion is i will try to i will give up this attempt to understand the absolute by gyan and i will surrender and listen to his glories from the mouths of authoritative uh spiritually realized personalities so by this method uh <clears throat> one cannot achieve the factual supreme truth is not possible now in his bhakti sandarbha shila jiva goswami has outlined the relative truth that is attained by those who pursue the path of impersonal knowledge as follows so this is a very uh, long sanskrit quote from the commentary of shila jiva goswami in his bhakti sandarbha so i'm not going to read that i'm going to just read the translation of that so he says in the beginning the students who are pursuing the path of gyan they require sufficient discrimination to comprehend the existence of a transcendental entity a chinmoy vastu that is beyond the contamination of gross matter <clears throat> how do they do that he says here they have to they require sufficient discrimination 
if they're going to pursue the path of Gyan. So, in order to comprehend the existence of a transcendental entity that is beyond the contamination of gross matter. Now, although the specific attributes of Godhead established by the potencies inherent within the Lord's very nature, those attributes of Godhead established by the potencies inherent within the Lord's very nature, they are intrinsically present within that transcendental entity. The adherents of the path of Gyan, they are unable to perceive them. For example, the sun is a luminary that dispels the darkness of night. And although its luminous quality is easily understood, the inner and the outer workings of the sun planet, the difference that exists between individual particles of light, and the specific distinguishing features of the innumerable atomic particles of light, they are all imperceptible to human eyes. So similarly, those who view the transcendent entity through the eyes of impersonal knowledge, they're unable to perceive the Lord's divine personal attributes. If, as previously described, one acquires transcendental vision by the special mercy of great devotees, then one will be able to directly recognize the Lord's personal attributes. Otherwise, by realization of the impersonal, existential Brahman, one will attain only the state of merging into that Brahman. And then that's the first quote, and here's the second quote from the same Bhakti Sandarbha. This knowledge is stated in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8, verse 3, Swabhavo Adhyatmam Uchate meaning the inherent nature of the living entity is also known as the self. The meanings of the words Swabhav and Adhyatma, they are as follows. Swa refers to the pure self, the Shuddha Atma. And the word Bhav refers to ascertainment. Hence, the ascertainment of the pure entity, the pure living entity, as a unique individual, eternally related to the Supreme, that is known as Swabhav. So when the self, when the Atma, is made the principal subject of focus, and is thus given the power to act in its proper function, then it is known as Adhyatma. So the self is made the principal subject of the focus and thus it is given the power to act in its proper function. Then it is known as Adhyatma. Now the purport of this is that when spiritual knowledge is acquired through the process of negation, neti neti, the absolute truth which is transcendental to the illusory material potency maya, it is, is, not, is realized only partially. Huh? What is that? When the spiritual knowledge is acquired through the process, process of neti neti, uh, then, then whatever they realize of the absolute truth, uh, which is transcendental to the illusory material potency maya, is only, is only realized partially only partially realized. So the variegated aspect of transcendence, which lies much deeper within, is not realized. If one who follows this process, he, if that person who follows this process meets a personalist or a self-realized Vaishnava spiritual master, then only can he be protected from the impediment or the anarta of impersonalism? That's the only way. Those who pursue the path of yoga 
in the end they arrive only at the realization of what? The all-pervading super soul. That's all. So first is Gyan. They can realize what? Brahman. Secondly, if they're following, they're pursuing the path of yoga, and then in the end, they can only arrive at the realization of Super Soul Paramatma. They cannot attain realization of the Supreme Lord in His ultimate manifestation. Paramatma, Ishwara, personal Vishnu, and so on, they are the objects of research in the yoga process. Now in this process, we can find a few attributes of bhakti, but it is not unalloyed devotion. So what did he just say? He says, in this pursuit, yes, we can find a few attributes of bhakti, which is mixed in with it, right? But it is not unalloyed devotion, no. Generally, religious principles in this world that pass for the topmost spiritual path, they are all merely yoga processes that strive for realization of the Paramatma feature. We cannot expect that in, in the end, all of them will ultimately lead us to the topmost path, Bhagavad Dharma. Why? Because in the process of meditation, there are numerous obstacles before one finally realizes the absolute truth. And besides, when after practicing either yoga or meditation for some time, one imagines that I am Brahman, then there is the maximum possibility of falling into the trap of impersonal spiritual gyan. So in this process, the realization of the eternal form of Bhagavan and the variegated characteristics of transcendence, it's not available. It's not available. You're going down the wrong path. You'll not achieve realization on that path. Hmm? So in this process, realization of the eternal form of Bhagavan and of the variegated characteristics of transcendence, it's not available. The form that is imagined at the time of meditational worship, upasana, right? Meditational imagining such and such form. Huh? So whether, it, whether that form that you're imagining, be, whether it's the gigantic form of the Lord conceived in the shape of the universe, or it's the forearm form situated within the heart, it's not eternal. Not eternal. Is the Paramatma in the heart eternal? No. At the dissolution of the creation, that Paramatma merges back into Kira Dakshai Vishnu, Garba Daksha, and all not eternal form. That is within the eternal form of Bhagavan. But manifested outwardly in that way, it is not an eternal form. So, uh, the form that is imagined at the time of meditational worship, Upasana, so whether that imaginary form is the gigantic form of the Lord, the Virat Rupa, or what is the forearm form situated within the heart? Both of these are not eternal. This process is called Paramatma Darshan, realization of the Super Soul. Although this process is superior to the cultivation of impersonal Gyan, it is not the perfect and the all-pleasing process. Ashtanga Yoga, Hatha Yoga, Karma Yoga, and all other yoga practices are included within this process. Although Raja or Adhyatma Yoga follows this process to a certain extent, in most cases it is merely included within the process of Gyan. Gyan. That's all. 
Raja, Adhyatma Yoga, although it follows this process to a certain extent, but in most cases it is merely included within the process of Gyan. So the philosophical conclusion is that realization of the super soul, it cannot be called Shuddha Bhakti. Can it be called pure bhakti? The realization of Paramatma, the super soul? No, it can't. So in this regard, it is said in the Bhakti Sandarbha, Antaryamit Vamaya Maya Shakti Prachur Chit Shakti uh, Asha Vishishtam Paramatmeti. This means, after the creation of this universe, the expansion of the Supreme Lord who enters it as the controller of material nature. Hmm? After the creation of this universe, the expansion of the Supreme Lord who enters it as the controller of material nature <clears throat> and who is situated as the maintainer of the creation. So he is known as Jagadishwar the all-pervading Paramatma, Jagadishwar. His function is related more to displaying the external potency rather than the internal potency. So therefore, this aspect of the Absolute Truth is naturally inferior to the Supreme and the Eternal Bhagavan aspect. Now, the Absolute Truth realized exclusively through the process of bhakti. Now we're coming to the main point. The absolute truth realized exclusively through the process of bhakti. He is called Bhagavan. You cannot realize Bhagavan through jnana, through yoga, only through the process of bhakti. That aspect, that ex aspect of the absolute truth, Bhagavan, is realized through the process of bhakti. So in the Bhakti Sandarbha, the characteristics of Bhagavan are described. Here's the short Sanskrit statement. Paripurna Sarva Shakti Vishishta Bhagavan Iti means the complete absolute truth endowed with all transcendental potencies is called Bhagavan. So what is, how, do one, how does one know and understand Bhagavan? Because he has all Shakti. He has all transcendental potencies. Does the Paramatma have that? No. Does Brahman have that? No. Only Bhagavan has all transcendental potencies. Therefore, he is the Padipurna Sarva Shakti Vishishta Bhagavan Iti. Huh? The complete absolute truth endowed with all transcendental potencies and he is called Bhagavan. Now, after the creation of the universe, after Bhagavan creates the universe, then Bhagavan enters it through what? Bhagavan enters the universe after he creates the universe and how does he enter the universe through what? His partial expansion who is called Paramatma. And also as Garbo Dakashai he is situated as the super soul of the complete universe. And as Kiro Dakashai, he is situated as the super soul in the hearts of the living entities. Again, in direct distinction from the manifested material worlds, Bhagavan appears as the impersonal Brahman. So hence, Bhagavan is the original aspect of Godhead and the Supreme Absolute Truth. That is the conclusion. He is the original aspect of Godhead and He is the Supreme Absolute Truth. And His intrinsic form, His Swarup Vigraha, is transcendental. 
So complete spiritual bliss, complete ananda, spiritual bliss, it resides in Him. His potencies are inconceivable and beyond any reasoning. He cannot be fathomed by any process fabricated by the knowledge of the infinitesimal living entity, the jiva. And by the influence of his inconceivable potency, the entire universe and all the living entities residing within it, they have manifested. How have the living entities residing within the material universe manifested? By the influence of his inconceivable potency. The entire universe, all the living entities residing within it have manifested. So jivas manifesting from the marginal potency that is called Tatashta Shakti of Bhagavan, they become successful only by following the path of engaging exclusively uh, in his loving transcendental service. Yes. Yes. So now the jivas manifesting from the marginal potency that's called tatasta shakti. Are we those type of jivas? Are we the types of jivas that manifest from the tatasta shakti? Hmm? Yes. Jivas manifesting from the marginal potency Tatasta Shakti of Bhagavan. How can they become successful, these jivas, like us? How can they become successful? Only by following the path of engaging exclusively in his loving transcendental service. That's all. Then, if they do that, by the practice of chanting the holy name, Nam Bhajan, one can realize through one's transcendental eyes the unparalleled beauty of Bhagavan. So the processes of Gyan and Yoga, they're incapable of approaching Bhagavan. So when they are approached through the cultivation of impersonal knowledge, then the Lord appears as the formless and the effulgent impersonal Brahman. And if he is seen through the yoga process, then he appears as Paramatma invested within this material creation. So Bhakti, Bhakti is supremely pure. Supremely pure. It is very painful. Listen to this sentence. It is very painful for Bhakti Devi, who is the personification of Bhakti, to see the Supreme Personality in His lesser manifestations. It's painful for her. If she sees this anywhere, she cannot tolerate it. Repeat that in Russian language. You read it and repeat it. What was just stated here about Bhakti Devi and why and how it is painful for Bhakti Devi, the personification of pure Bhakti. Bhakti высшей степени чиста. Bhakti Devi. Louder. Bhakti Devi. Неприятно видеть Бхагавана, верховную личность в ее низших ипостасях. Это причиняет ей боль, и потому она просто не может оставаться там, где не стремятся постичь высший аспект абсолютной истины. Why? Почему? Why does Bhakti Devi feel pain? Why is it painful for her? Bhakti Devi is a shakti, a shakti, uh, 
She's she's what? Bhakti Devi, she is Khladini Shakti. She uh, Krishna possesses Khladini Shakti. She so she like her uh, he, uh, she is his uh, property. She couldn't she couldn't uh, look other side uh, lower uh, position of his aspects. So why she couldn't accept uh, another uh, features? See, Bhakti Devi, that's correct, what you told. Bhakti Devi is Ladini Shakti, potency. Bhakti Devi is supremely pure. We just heard that. Bhakti is supremely pure. There's no addition, nothing added to Bhakti. So therefore, Bhakti Devi, who is the personification of Bhakti, uh, she is always in the presence of Krishna in his supreme aspect of Bhagavan, always. And she is relishing and tasting and she is serving Bhagavan. Uh, but for her to see this Bhagavan, her supremely worshipable Lord, manifested in his lesser manifestations like Paramatma, like Brahman, she cannot tolerate this. <laughs> now out of these three manifestations of the Absolute Truth, what are those? What are the three manifestations of the Absolute Truth, everyone? Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. So out of these three manifestations of the Absolute Truth, it is only the manifestation of Bhagavan's personal form that is the object of bhakti. We are trying to do bhakti, are we not? Yes, Karanga? Are we trying to do bhakti? Who is the object of our bhakti? Paramatma? Are we trying to realize Paramatma by our bhakti? No. Are we trying to realize the impersonal aspect of the Supreme by our bhakti? No. So, only the manifestation of Bhagavan's personal form. This is the object of bhakti. That's all. There is no other object. That's why Anyabilashita Shunyam Jnana Karma Dhyanavritam Anukul Yena Krishna. Krishna. Anushilanam. Only Krishna. No other form, no other expansion, only Krishna. Then bhakti can be manifested, pure bhakti can be manifested, uttama bhakti can be manifested. But even within Bhagavan's personal manifestation, there is one important distinction. Within his personal manifestation, there is one important distinction. This is where the internal potency, the Swarup Shakti, displays its complete opulence, Aishwarya, right? When Swarup Shakti, the internal potency, displays its complete opulence, Aishwarya, then there Bhagavan appears as Vaikuntanath Narayan. Yes? And where the internal potency displays its supreme madhurya, sweetness, there Bhagavan appears as Sri Krishna. So despite being predominant almost everywhere, Aishwarya loses its charm in the presence of madhurya. In the material world we cannot draw such a comparison. No ex such example is visible anywhere. In the material world, Aishwarya is more influential than Madhurya. But in the spiritual world, it is completely the opposite. There, Madhurya is superior and is more influential than Aishwarya. Oh my dear devotees, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is telling us now, <clears throat> oh my dear devotees, all of you 
just deliberate upon Aishwarya one time and then afterwards lovingly bring sentiments of Madhurya into your hearts. By doing so, you will be able to understand this truth. Just as in the material world, when the sun rises and it consumes the moonlight, similarly, when a taste of sweetness of Madhurya appears in a devotee's heart, he no longer finds Aishwarya to be tasteful. This is a very big, major Siddhantic conception. So what was just stated here? Tell in Russian language. Uh, this last point my, my, that was... My words or huh? I should read or say... No, you try to say it by what you, understanding what you just read. Шрил Бхактинот Такур говорит, что несмотря что несмотря то, что в этом мире мы замечаем мат Ашварио и Ашвария она как бы преобладает на Матхоре, но в духовном мире все наоборот, Матхоре намного превышает. И он говорит, я приглашаю вас всех прислушайтесь к своим сердцу и примите всем сердцем Матхурио, а не Ашварио, потому что многие из преданных они все-таки еще э, могут быть сомневаться и не могут даже хотеть на Вайкунху или в Двароку, например. Но он как бы приглашает и говорит, образумьтесь, не надо вам в Двароку идти или куда-то другие места. Идите э, в Матхурю, потому что это сладостное и это наше предназначение. So what is the example that he gives there? He compares the moonlight and the sunlight. Подобно тому, как солнце восходя поглощает лунный свет, вкус к Матхури пробуждается сердце преданного, вытесняет оттуда вкус к Ашваре. То есть солнце, когда поднимается, оно э, начинает затмевать своими солнечными лутнами, лучами э, лунный свет. Лунный свет в этом смысле подразумевается Ашваре, а солнечный свет подразумевается Матхури. Солнечный свет, он превосходит Луну, и таким образом он дает таким э, примером э, э, показывать, что Матхурия, она превышает Айшварию. Now, let's contemplate this. We all can see in the sky that when the moon is in the sky and there's light coming from the moon, but when the sun begins to rise, you know, in the morning, but the moon is still there, what happens? <laughs> the moon becomes completely cancelled out practically, the moonlight. It becomes absorbed into the sunlight and then it doesn't even exist separately. Cannot see it. So he's using this example with Aishwarya and Madhurya. Now, I want to bring into this discussion what Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj says about this. So, we know the verse that describes the term Bhagavan. This term Bhagavan, who is the possessor of all what? Bhaga. Bhaga means opulences. They are listed here in this shloka as being six opulences. What are they? Aishwaryasya, that means wealth. Samagrasya. Viryasya means power. Virya. Yashasha, fame. Shriyam, beauty. Jnana, knowledge, vairagyayoschaiva, and renunciation. Sannam bhaga itingina. So, uh, it is explained also that these six opulences which simultaneously exist in Bhagavan's form eternally, uh, but Amongst all of them, which one is the central, the central opulence that is more prominent and more powerful than the others? What is that? 
Shriyam. Beauty. Beauty. You see here the word sweetness is being used by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. You see, to explain this. Sweetness is being used. Madhurya. Madhurya means sweet. But what is sweet? Is Paramatma sweet? No. Is Brahman sweet? No. Are the forms of Bhagavan sweet? Yes, but they're sweet in different gradations. Certainly, Lord Narayan's form is beautiful because he's Bhagavan, so he has all beauty. But does he have sweetness? Yes, he has, for sure. But does he have sweetness on every single aspect of rasa? No. He cannot be tasted in the moods of Madhurya Ras, the moods of Vatsalya Ras. It does not exist there. So, Madhurya is the limb, like even Sharanagati also has six, six limbs. But you can use the same example, that the six opulences, they're all attached and connected with Shriyam. Shriyam is the, you know, the, the what do you call it, the trunk of the body. Yeah, the legs are, and the arms and the head are five. So they are the other opulences. But Shriyam is the central. So he's saying that if you contemplate like this, deliberate like this, uh, how in the material world Aishwarya is more influential than Madhurya, but in the spiritual world, completely the opposite. But there, Madhurya is superior and is more influential than Aishwarya. So now he says, Oh my dear devotees, all of you just deliberate upon Aishwarya just one time. Think about the Aishwarya. And then afterwards, lovingly bring sentiments of Madhurya into your hearts. By doing so, you will be able to understand this truth. Just as in the material world, when the sun rises, it consumes the moonlight. Similarly, when a taste of the sweetness of Madhurya appears in a devotee's heart, he no longer finds Aishwarya to be tasteful. Well, this is so important. This is why we chant the holy names of Krishna. This is why we worship the deity forms of the Lord. This is why we hear Srimad Bhagavatam. This is why uh, we want to... Uh, imbue our hearts with all these sweet impressions of Krishna's name, form, qualities, pastimes. So when a devotee has advanced in his practice of Nam Bhajan, in his practice of uh, executing the principles of Bhakti Yoga, when that devotee becomes more and more advanced and greed dawns in his heart. What is it greed for? What is it what is that lobha? What does that become attracted to? That greed for what? For Krishna's sweet f name, form, qualities, pastimes. That is called Bhagavat Madhurya Mai. No, sorry, Bhagavat Madhurya Leela Mai. Madhurya Leela Mai Shraddha. That's what it's called. Uh, so, <laughs> that also is the qualification for coming onto the pathway of what? Raga Nuga Bhakti. Where this attraction to just the Aishwarya aspect of Bhagavan, it is not there. So, now, uh, we've just got a few more minutes in this class. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he says in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu that Rupa Goswami has written this verse uh, comparing Lord Narayan to Krishna. So he says, Siddhantas, Siddhantatas Tvavedepi Siddhantatas Tvavedepi Shrisha Krishna Swarupayo 
रसे नोत कृष्य थे कृष्णा रूपम ऐसा रस स्थिति सो दिस मीन्स Rupa Goswami has written this verse. He says, although from the existential viewpoint, that means from what? <laughs> from the aspect of Siddhantic. Huh? So from the existential viewpoint, Narayan and Krishna, they are actually the same. They are non-different. Huh? But Krishna... Although that's true, that from that viewpoint, Narayan and Krishna are non-different, but Krishna is superior. Why? Due to possessing more rasa. <laughs> more rasa, that's the reason. So such is the glory of rasa tattva. And this topic will be made clear later in this discussion. But for now, it is essential to understand that the favorable cultivation of activities meant to please Sri Krishna, that's called what? Anukul Yena Anushilanam. So that it is essential to understand the favorable cultivation of activities meant to please Sri Krishna. This is the sole intrinsic characteristic or the Swarup Lakshan of Bhakti. This is the Swarup Lakshan. So thus, this confirms the same statement made in the verse under discussion from the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Now, to remain devoid of desires, because the rest of the verse is talking about other desires than this, right? Anya abhilashita shunyam. So, to remain devoid of desires separate from the desire to please Krishna, Anya abhilashita, and also to be free from the coverings of Gyan and Karma, Gyan, Karma, Adi, and Navritam. These are the marginal characteristics or the Tatasta Lakshan of Bhakti. Vishnu Bhakti Pravakshyami Yaya Sarvam Avapyate. In this half verse from the Bhakti Sandarbha, the marginal characteristics of Bhakti are reviewed. Its meaning is that by the practice of the aforementioned Vishnu Bhakti, the living entity can attain everything. The desire to attain something is called Abhilashita. From the word Abhilashita, one should not derive the meaning that the desire to progress in bhakti and to ultimately reach its perfectional stage is also to be rejected. No. No, no. That's not anya abhilas. Uh, then Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, quote, Through my practice of sadhana bhakti, I will one day attain the elevated stage of bhav. This way of thinking is highly commendable for a devotee to maintain such a desire. Huh? That what? Through my practice of sadhana bhakti, I will one day attain the elevated stage of bhav. So, it is very commendable for a devotee to maintain such a desire. But apart from this desire, all other types of desires are fit to be rejected. So there are two types of separate desire. Two types. One is the desire for sense gratification, which is called bhukti. The desire to gratify your senses is called bhukti. What are all the jivas doing in the material world? That's all, bhukti. Barely anyone is even searching for mukti. <laughs> They're all simply searching for sense gratification. So, these, there are two different types of separate desire that have to be rejected. So, first is bhukti, and then the desire for liberation, mukti. That's the second one. Now Rupa Goswami says in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu also 
Pukti mukti spriha yavat pishachi hridi vartate Tavad bhakti sukhas yatra katam abhyu dayo bhavet He's saying that as long as the two witches what is a witch? Pishachi a witch casting spells harming people they're not good creatures so as long as these two witches of the desires for bhukti and mukti remain in a devotee's heart then not even a fraction of the pure happiness derived from sarup siddha bhakti will arise as long as the desire for what what are the two things that the desire for what bhukti mukti bhukti and mukti if that's in the devotee's heart as long as it remains there not even a fraction of the pure happiness derived from Swarup Siddha Bhakti will arise so both bodily and mental enjoyment they're considered to be mukha, bhukti hmm? also mental enjoyment it's all bhukti so to make an extraneous effort to remain free from disease or to desire pal palatable foodstuffs strength, power, wealth, followers, wife, children, fame and victory these are all considered bhukti and to desire to take one's next birth in a Brahmin family or in a royal family to attain residence in the heavenly planets or in Brahma Loka or to obtain any other type of happiness in one's next life is also considered bhukti. Practice of the Eightfold Yoga System and the desire to attain the eight or eighteen varieties of mystic perfections they're also categorized as bhukti the greed for bhukti forces the living entity to become subordinate to the six enemies headed by lust and anger so if you have the desire for bhukti you're gonna always be trapped by kam, krod, loba, moha, madha, matsarya now envy easily takes over the heart of the living entity and envy rules that heart when what the greed for bhukti is there because it forces the living entity to become subordinate to the six enemies headed by lust and anger so envy easily takes over the heart of the living entity and rules it so hence to attain unalloyed devotion, one has to remain completely aloof from the desire for bhukti. If you want to attain what? You have to become completely aloof from the desire for bhukti if you want unalloyed devotion. Shuddha bhakti. You must give that up. Now to abandon the desire for bhukti a conditioned soul need not reject the objects of the senses by going to reside in the forest. Merely going to reside in the forest or accepting the dress of a renunciate, a sannyasi, that will not free one from the desire for bhukti. If bhakti resides in a devotee's heart then even while living amidst the objects of the senses he will be able to remain detached from them and will be capable of abandoning the desire for bhukti so therefore Srila Rupa Goswami says in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Ruchim Udvahatas Tatra Janasya Bhajane Hare Vishayeshu Garishto P. Raga Prayo Viliate Anasaktasya Vishayan 
यथार्हम उपयुंजता निर्बंध कृष्ण संबंधे युक्त वैराग्यम उच्चते प्रपंचिकतया बुद्धिया हरि संबंधी वस्तुना मुमुक्षु भी परित्यागो वैराग्यम फलगु खात्यते Obadev knows all these shlokas. I also know. Why? Because many, many years ago, we were hearing and reading them again and again and again as we went through Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavatam, Gita, and all of his books, and in his lectures and all. So, these are the two verses that are describing what? Renunciation. So the point that Bhakti Vinod Thakur is making here is that when the living entity develops a taste for Krishna Bhajan, when the living entity develops a taste for Krishna Bhajan, oh, then at that time his excessive attachment for the objects of the senses they start gradually fading. So this is the key. This is the process. This is the process that Srila Prabhupada employed to snatch and rescue the jivas from the endless, endless cycle of birth and death. And in the Kali Yuga on top of it, where all sense gratification is abounding, where the jivas are born into sense gratification circumstances and the whole society worships it. Huh? Everything is all material attainment and opulence and material enjoyment by the senses is considered the greatest achievement of life. Hmm? But when a living entity develops a taste for Krishna Bhajan, that's what happened to us, isn't it? It happened to us. Because we were practicing in the association of devotees and trying to apply that in our life. So therefore, some taste developed for Krishna Bhajan. And then at that time, excessive attachment for the objects of the senses gradually started to fade. Hmm? And then, with the spirit of detachment, that devotee who has developed a taste for Krishna Bhajan, what does that devotee do? With the spirit of detachment, he accepts the objects of the senses only according to his needs, knowing that those objects are related to Krishna, Krishna Sambandha. And he behaves accordingly. This is called what? Yukta Vairagya. Everyone repeat after me. Yukta. 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 Vairagya. Vairagya. Yukta Vairagya. Yukta Vairagya. This is called renunciation that is practical. Now, there's another type of renunciation. Those are the persons who want mukti. They want mukti. They want impersonal liberation. And they perform renunciation. So the renunciation of those who, desiring liberation from matter, they therefore reject the objects of the senses, considering them to be illusory. Oh, this is called falgu. You know what the word falgu means? Here he's translating it as useless. Useless. Falgu vairagya. It is not possible for an embodied soul to completely renounce the objects of the senses. Not possible. But changing the enjoying tendency towards them while maintaining an understanding of their relation to Krishna, that cannot be called sense gratification. How is that? Let's analyze. The, the, the objects of the senses are five. The senses have five objects. What are they? 
First of all is rupa. Rupa means form. Second one is rasa, taste. Third one is ganda, smell. Fourth one is sparsha, touch. And the fifth one is shabda, sound. These are the objects of the senses. We should try to perceive the world in such a way that everything appears related to Krishna. Meaning that we should see all living entities as servants and maid servants of Krishna. We should see gardens and rivers as pleasurable sporting places for Krishna. Uh, one second. We should see that all types of eatables are to be used as an offering for his pleasure. In all types of aromas, perceive the aroma of Krishna Prasad. In the same way, see that all types of flavors are to be relished by Krishna. See that all the elements that we touch, they are related to Krishna. And here only narrations describing the activities of Krishna or his great devotees. So when a devotee develops such an outlook, then he will no longer see the objects of the senses as being separate from Bhagavan himself. The tendency to enjoy the happiness obtained from sense gratification, that tendency to enjoy the happiness obtained from sense gratification, it intensifies the desire for mukti within the heart of a devotee and ultimately deviates him from the path of bhakti. How does a devotee become deviated from a path of bhakti? When what? His tendency to enjoy the sense gratification the happiness, temporary happiness from sense gratification when it intensifies the desire for bhukti within the heart of a devotee then what happens? ultimately it deviates him from the path of bhakti now on the other hand by accepting all the objects of this world as instruments to be employed in Krishna's service then the desire for bhukti is completely eradicated from the heart. Thus allowing unalloyed devotion to manifest there. So as it is imperative to abandon the desire for bhukti, it is equally important to abandon the desire for mukti liberation. And there are some very deep principles and conceptions regarding mukti. But we are going to save that. It's getting near the end of this first part. We'll save that to the next class because it's considerably long and we've already gone a little bit over time. So, uh, yes. So the next uh, subject we'll be discussing is regarding the desire for mukti. Hmm? So that discussion of mukti, what types of mukti there are, which types of mukti are uh, suitable or favorable for bhakti, and which types of mukti are not, and so forth, we'll discuss that. In our next class, Gaur Prema Anandi, Jai Shila Bhakti Vinod Thakur Ki Jai, Jai Bhakti Tattva Viveka Ki Jai, Shila Rupa Goswami Pada Ki Jai, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Ki Jai, Sri Manasiksha Ki Jai, Raghunathas Goswami Pada Ki Jai, Nitai Gaur Prema Anandi. So I'm feeling very enlivened when I read this. This is so wonderful. And without this, no one can enter Manasiksha, I'm sorry to say. Without grasping this, 
and without understanding very deeply the verse on Yabilashi Dashunyam, no one can enter into Manasiksha. Neither can they even come to the latter slokas of the Upadesha Amrita. Uh, unless they understand this, how are they going to be able to follow the eighth shloka of uh, Upadesha Amrita? What's the eighth shloka? In the microphone. Krishna Suchak Pranayava Satik Priyat. What? What? Ah, no, that is eleventh. Sat Krishna Nama Chiritadi Sita Pia Vidya. No. Tanama Ruba Chiritadi Sukirtanano, Smertyok Kramina Rasanasya Narochikano. Manasi Niyoja. Niyoja. Tishtan Vrajita Anuragi Jananugami. Kalam. Kalam na yet at kilam utupadesha saram. Yes. Now, what is the meaning? Tell in Russian language. Считаю себя последователем жителей Враджа, таких как шесть Госвами. Мы должны также, которые обладают любовной привязанности к Шее Кришне, мы должны также поселиться в этом месте святом Враджа и посвящать свой речь прославлением имен, качеств, игр Кришны, формы, а ум медитации на них. В этом заключается суть всех наставлений. Yeah, so this is called Iti Upadesha Saram. That means it is the essence of all Upadesh. All Upadesh means all instructions. So Rupa Goswami has given the Upadesha Amrita to bring the Vaishnavas onto the path of Uttama Bhakti. That's what the Upadesha Amrita is for. For bringing all the Vaishnavas, all, the, all, all of the uh, sadhaks who are hoping one day that they can become real sadhaks, the Upadesha Amrita has to be followed. And when that is followed, then one can finally come to the eighth shloka, which means 24-hour engagement. That 24-hour engagement in what? Krishna's name, Krishna's form, Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's qualities, antaraj, paraphernalia, everything, by doing what? Sukirtananu, Sukirtan. Doing con continuous chanting and kirtan. Then, Smrityo Kramena Rasana Manasini Yojya. And in when, when one is doing that kirtan, then the mind and the tongue become completely absorbed in that. Where? Living in Vrindavan, under the guidance of exalted Mahabhagwat Vaishnavas. So, without that, how is someone going to enter into the Manasiksha? You'll see, because I'm coming to the Manasiksha, but I'm giving this prerequisite training uh, that you'll hear these things first. And then you'll understand whether you're qualified or not. But the Manasiksha is for advanced Vaishnavas who now want to come onto the pathway of Rag Anuga Bhakti that we read about in our last book, Rag Vartmachandrika, and then and then Srila Raghunath Das Goswami is giving us this very valuable conversation and instructions to his mind how to pursue this pathway so but before we try to enter into that well, we, then we have to understand what is bhakti we have to understand all the different types of bhakti and that which is not bhakti because the majority of persons who try to haphazardly just enter into the, the realm of rag, rag marg, and rasa, uh, the majority of them, they don't have the qualifications. Uh, and they just become deviated from the path of bhakti. Uh, they because, because they become prakriti sahajya. They never will achieve the result of entering into pure bhakti, uttama bhakti. So we'll discuss that 
later on, but this is the reason why I'm reading this book first, because it's very short. It's very short, and I think it is very appropriate for the audience that we have in this room and also some of the persons uh, watching online. So, but this will be very valuable and very, very helpful. So as I'm reading through this, I'm seeing, my God, how incredible presentation Bhakti Vinod Thakur is making. <laughs> that after reading this, you will understand the meaning of Utsahan, of, of um, Anyabi Lashita Shunyam. You, you did that, that verse. You'll understand the meaning of it. No question. Uh, and then you'll be able to apply it in your spiritual practices also. Gaur Prima Anandi. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I go to Hadibo, 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 Hadibo. Nitai go to Hadibo, Hadibo, Hadibo. Nitai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bo Om Brindai Tulsi Devai Priyai Keshava Sya Krishna Bhakti Pradi Devi Satyava Chai Namo Nama Vansha Kalpadurubascha Kripa Sindhu Bevaja Patitanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha all glory to the assembled devotees.